fast paced modern life which we all are leading is full of stress. There is no dearth of stress in our daily lives. There is stress at the home front, in the society, on the road, at the workplace and everywhere. Now what actually stress does to our system is it secretes hormones which are unfriendly to our metabolism. So most of the hormones which are released by the brain and the endocrine system in response to stress have an adverse effect on blood pressure, blood glucose and cholesterol. There is no way that we can avoid stress in the modern fast-paced life, but we should learn how to handle stress. And I'll just share with you the simple things how stress can be handled. Of course, the best thing which is our in our ancestry is yoga, meditation and deep breathing. We should try to maintain a good work-life balance. Find time for personal hobbies and interests. Maintain good relationships with friends and relatives to maintain quality time. And above all, make sure that you get 6 to 8 hours of quality sleep from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Consumption of alcohol by somebody who is suffering from diabetes is generally not recommended because alcohol can aggravate multiple medical and complications of diabetes. Uh, for example, alcohol and diabetes can cause liver disease, alcohol can aggravate gastric ulcers, it can cause pancreatitis and moreover it can aggravate diabetic neuropathy because alcoholic neuropathy and diabetic neuropathy sometimes can go hand in hand. So how do we define alcohol intake? One unit of alcohol is the amount of alcohol uh, which the liver can metabolize in one hour which may include about an uh, 10 ounces of a beer, a glass of wine, a 30 or 40 ml of a spirit, they all practically contain the same amount of alcohol and it is recommended that not more than one drink per day in a woman and not more than two drinks in a uh, male uh, are recommended. Uh, regarding the use of nicotine and the habit of smoking, we all know that we are exposed to not only active smoking among, among us nicotine addicts but also passive smoking is common in crowded areas and gatherings where there are a lot of people who are smoking. Now smoke is injurious to health to it can cause lung disease, cancers but specifically in the context of diabetes smoking increases the risk of having a paralytic stroke or a heart attack in somebody who has diabetes along with other risk factors like high blood pressure and high cholesterol. By physical exercise, we mean a series of repetitive movements which are performed in a systematic fashion for the purpose of health maintenance, benefit and fitness. There are various ways to exercise broadly which we can divide into two categories the aerobic or the endurance exercises and the resistance training exercises. The endurance exercises are like walking, like jogging, swimming, cycling. Whereas the resistance training exercises are those that are performed with light weights and involve muscle stretching. 
So there are various ways people like to exercise. Some people are very discreetional. They go for morning walks. Some people like recreational exercises. They take up a racket sport or they go swimming or dancing. There are also occasions to exercise during your daily routine by taking the stairs instead of the elevators, by taking short walks during office working hours and by parking your vehicle away from your destination. How much exercise should one do in a day? Well, about 30 to 40 minutes of aerobic activity done five days a week is sufficient for most persons and you can add about 15 to 20 minutes of resistance training. Interestingly, exercise has many, many and multiple benefits. The major benefit is of course weight maintenance. Exercise will reduce blood pressure, reduce blood glucose, reduce serum cholesterol. It improves bone health, it improves self-esteem and it lifts depression. So let us discuss each one of these lifestyle disorders separately. So when we talk about diet and its relation to diabetes and obesity, there are three things. First of all is the food choice. Second is the quantity of food ingested. And third is the timing of food. First of all, talking about food choices. So making the right food choice is important. One should try to choose whole grain cereals, pulses, legumes, green vegetables, fruits, low fat dairy products. And one should try to avoid saturated fats, butter, ghee, cream, red meats, deep fried food, confectionery, sweetened beverages and fruit juices. Regarding portion control, I think we all should maintain that eating in moderation is something that can be allowed while excessive uh, binge eating and snacking is to be avoided. The third thing about diet is eating on time. So it's absolutely the wrong things to do are like skipping breakfast, having long gaps between meals, having a late heavy dinner or eating at odd times, snacking between meals and even bedtime binging. Whatever dietary changes that are made and advised to patients with obesity and diabetes, they should be realistic, they should be practical and they should be sustainable. In the last two or three decades, the disease landscape has undergone a remarkable change. Infections and malnutritions, which were the small time criminals, have given way to the global terrorists in terms of diabetes, obesity and cardiovascular disease. The reason for the burgeoning epidemics of diabetes, obesity and cardiovascular disease are a faulty lifestyle, which includes wrong eating patterns, lack of physical activity, indulgence in alcohol and nicotine abuse, and above all, disturbed sleep and excessive stress. <laughs> 